8.40 a.m. here, Central Time, God's Time, right here in Omaha, Nebraska, the center of the United States of America. In fact, it's said that as it goes with the heart, they call us the heartland, it goes with the body. And one of the things I'm reminded of is God called our church here, Lord of Hosts Church. At the time He gave it to me back in 1996, I didn't know what the definition of Lord of Hosts was because the name was given by God. It means the Lord of Angel Armies. And so it's Lord of Hosts. Well, it's interesting because also right here in Omaha, Nebraska, during the time of 9-11, when the towers were attacked, that President Bush came right here to Omaha, Nebraska and began to command the uh, whole United States and the nuclear arsenal from a place called STRATCOM here. It's the whole nuclear command center for the United States when the nation was under attack. I believe right now that our nation is under attack. We are seeing fraud. We are seeing uh, this delay, this, quote, standstill as a result of the enemy trying to push his hand in a pre-planned attack, just like 9-11, to strike at the very soul and heart and future of this nation. Yet what did the people do at the time when 9-11 took place? Did we forget about America? No, we gathered our flags. We could, you know, anything we could find that had the image of our flag. We didn't burn it. We didn't hide it. We didn't bury it. We didn't stomp on it. We didn't, you know, uh, argue about our religious freedoms. No, we gathered together as a nation, as a people united, one nation under God. And we fought for the nation. And God said the night of 9-11... I will never forget it. We gathered together in prayer, and I believe that that particular moment in the history of our nation in 9-11, when the patriotic spirit arose and said, no, we are not going to allow our nation to go under, that is the same spirit that I believe right now is upon this nation, and has been upon this nation, has been what brought us to the, uh, the... And it's the very outcry that is among at least 60 million who are saying, wait a minute, how can 100,000 to all for one same candidate? This is an outrage. We need to arise at this time with the same patriotic spirit that says we are not going to let go of this great land of the, of the free and the home of the brave. We're going to unite in prayer. In fact, that's what we did on 9-11, and I say this because I want to show you a pattern of what God is declaring at this time. Right now, our nation is under attack. It may not be towers attacked, but it's the future and the destiny of our nation that is under attack. And so, on 9-11, we prayed as a congregation. My congregation would know this. We didn't have live stream like this. We didn't have social media. But at the time, God began to speak prophetically, and he talked about how we would go to war And it would not be something that would be right because there would be a lot of political things that would be behind it. But he said this, I will raise up a promise, a mystery unto this nation. He said, out of the place where your towers were wounded and attacked this day, this was on 9-11, he said, from this place, I will raise up a president. It will be a mystery, my mystery, from the place of New York. And he will represent what I will do in this land to bring this nation back on course. Think about it. Donald Trump, born, birth, New York City, New York. He also represented a tower. What was attacked that day? Towers. What uh, did he represent? World trade. What was attacked? World trade centers. This is not a coincidence. What the enemy struck that day in 9-11 to wound our nation, our nation has never been the same since. God has purposed this president to be raised up to bring a healing and a future for our children and for this generation. The enemy is wanting to skip over a generation, and I want you to pay attention. How does the enemy want us to skip over a generation? He wants us to to get into believing an evil report that you're seeing perhaps if you're watching the news. He wants us to come into agreement with the enemy that wants to make us think that somehow this is God's plan and God's man with with Biden and Kamala Harris and and the left. And he, he wants nothing more than for the president to concede at this time. But I'm here to tell you this is not the plan of God. We have to be very careful because in the days when the prophets, yes, prophets Joshua and Caleb, I was speaking with Lance Wall now and he brought out this incredible point. 
about how Joshua and Caleb were prophets who God showed the mind, will, intent, agenda of God. They prophesied the will of heaven. God says, go forward. God says that you will come into the land of promise. Except 10 other spies came and, and began to bring an evil report. You can read this in Numbers 13. And began to say that the giants were too big or that this legal battle, bring it down to today, is too big. Don't you understand? The news is reporting, just like the 10 spies. This battle is too great. And listen to me, people. We cannot come into agreement with the 10 spies that were not speaking for God. And in, because of fear at our agreement, and God skips over a generation. No, it's not the prophet's fault. No, it's not that the prophets miss it. Joshua and Caleb did not miss it. In fact, they eventually saw the very words they prophesied. The prophets have been declaring that this president will get two terms. What we cannot do right now is come into agreement with what we're hearing on the news. We cannot come into agreement. Listen, they already planned it. What is the president going to do when he doesn't concede? Well, would you concede if you were part of something that was fraudulent and can be proven and will be proven? Would you concede? No, you wouldn't. We can't concede. That's exactly what Goliath did with the, the children of Israel. Spoke words for 40 days and 40 nights to get a nation to concede, to back off, to give up their promise. And it took David, an underdog, to absolutely shift a nation into victory when it didn't look like it was possible. We cannot be like the children of Israel, the nation who agreed with the report of evil rather than the word of the Lord that came through prophets Joshua and Caleb. Today, the biggest problem that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ has is, A, it's lazy. There's a sleep that has been upon the church. It's the sleep of Jacob. Jacob was asleep, and God visited him, and he didn't even know it. As we're looking at all the warfare that's happening, it's an indicator of a visitation of God, His glory coming to a nation. But yet we've got people who are in the church that don't understand that God is visiting us. This is not about a stealing of religious liberties. This is not about a redefining of, of traditional marriage. This is not about a generation of death, of abortion. This is not about a candidate that we don't like because of his personality. This is about our generation of our children and the children's children. And we cannot agree with an evil report that is going to arise and announcements that are going to come out that Biden is one and allow that to skip over this current generation, the blessings of life and all the things, the blessing of Israel that God has said, if you bless Israel, you shall be blessed. If you curse Israel, you shall be cursed. We cannot afford by our fear getting on social media and, and, and typing out the prophets have missed it, the people of God have missed it, I can't believe uh, and trust preachers anymore, I can't trust any, I stop it, you're agreeing with the 10 spies who came back, yes, with an evil report, and that is an evil report to attack the prophets, to attack the vessels of God, and those who are in fact hearing from the Lord. Listen, we are in a Gethsemane moment. Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he asked people to pray with him. Why? Why? Because he understood the battle. We didn't understand just the battle that would, would, would come upon this nation and the time frame that it would take for there to be a, a, a victory that would arise in the land. We just, you know, people were prophesying, you know, all kinds of red waves and things. I never prophesied those things because I didn't see it. However, I did prophesy on October 11th that there would be delay, there would be fraud, there would be deception. You can go out to our website and find that prophecy from October 11th. And God said, however, I will outweigh the defraud, the lies. I will outweigh the deception, the delay, and, and my man shall stand in the land. Now that is the, the heart, the mind, the will, and the intent of God. Just like it was for them to go into the promised land. They were never supposed to wander around 40 days and 40 nights. And I want to encourage us 
as the body of Christ, do not come into agreement. Do not do what the children of Israel did when Moses arose anointed and appointed of God to lead a people into their, their, their destiny. They, they spent the whole time accusing the leader and the prophetic words that were coming out of his mouth. It wasn't that Moses was wrong. I'm not saying prophets are not accountable or that they can't miss it. That's not what this is about. This is about will we believe and agree and mobilize and pray with the word of the Lord through those who have a different spirit that have been speaking now for a long time that God's will intent is for our children, for you to have a promise of a great America, a brighter future. But what the enemy is trying to do is get us to a place to agree with an evil report so that he can appoint Biden, Kamala Harris, and skip over a generation. And I don't know about you, it'd be like if you get a doctor's report. And they tell you that you have a few months to live because there's some kind of sickness in your body. Are you just going to accept it and lay there and die? Even though there's going to be an announcement that he, he's won and that Trump should concede, are you going to lay over as an American patriot, as a Christian warrior of the cross? And you've heard God's will, his mind, his intent. We all pray, Luke 11, verse 1, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When you hear the prophet say he will stand in the land, he will get a second term. This is the mind, the heart, the will, the agenda of God. We must connect our spirit and our faith and our agreement like God wanted with, with Numbers 13, Prophet Joshua and Prophet Caleb, when they came back with the true word of the Lord. But people chose fear over the will and the intent of God. Some of the ten prophets did that were sent as spies as well. God is specifically saying to us, do not do that. This is not the season and the time. We are to say, thy kingdom come, Lord, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's why Jesus, as I mentioned before, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he needed other people to pray with him. Because the Spirit is willing. God is willing to give this nation to us who have prayed, who have fasted, who have repented. But the flesh is weak. Don't allow your flesh to get over into fear. Don't allow your flesh to begin to attack one another. That's the biggest problem with Christians. Don't allow yourself to begin to attack the messengers and the mouthpieces of God. You need to say, our nation has been attacked. We've received an evil report, just like if it would be in your body, and I refuse to absolutely add my agreement to it. I will fight with every breath in my body. That's how you get healed. That's how this nation will be healed. I know I'm stirred because I feel a tremendous presence here. I want to share with you a dream that I had at 4.45 a.m. this morning. Now, before I share this dream, I want you to see something. In Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 26, the Bible says, disaster upon disasters, rumors upon rumors, then you will see or seek a vision from a prophet. So prophets God uses or prophetic voices in times of, of, of uh, disasters or even rumors. There's a lot of rumors going on. Be careful what you're adding your agreement to. Be careful what you're adding your faith to because the destiny of a nation weighs in balance. People say, well, because we didn't repent enough. Now, listen to me. How do you not repent enough when you've had great movements through men of God like Lou Engle, Dutch Sheets, Jonathan Kahn led a whole movement in Washington, D.C. of repentance. God has heard. We must get out of the numbers game. That's exactly what Abraham did in the book of Genesis. God came down to talk to his friend, and he said, shall I hold anything or keep anything away from my servant Abraham, my friend, who commands his own household after me? And, and he begins to tell him and talk to him about Sodom and Gomorrah and the condition. And he wanted to talk to his covenant man Abraham about this. Listen to me. If you're a Christian, you're a covenant man or woman. And God spoke to Abraham in Genesis about what he wanted to do. And it was Abraham's idea to begin a countdown starting with 50 people. And he said, God, if there be 50 righteous, 
Will you spare Sodom and Gomorrah? And God, he was more than willing to spare a very wicked place. He said, all right, if there's 50 righteous, I will spare it. And it was Abraham's idea, and there wasn't 50 righteous, and the numbering continued, 45, 40, 35, 30, kind of felt like an auction. And it came down to 10. And again, it was Abraham's, his own inability to see what moves the heart of God. People are doing the same thing. Well, we didn't repent enough. We need to repent. Listen to me. We've repented. And it was down to the countdown of 10. And God said, all right, if I can find, Abraham, your idea, 10 righteous, in all of Sodom and Gomorrah, I will spare it. But God didn't find 10. There was one, his covenant man, Abraham. And the Bible says in Genesis 19 that Abraham walked away. In other words, he quit on a people. You could say he quit on a territory. Or he quit on a nation because the media. And as a result, Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. Is this what we want? Do we want our nation to be destroyed because we cannot believe the prophets? 2 Chronicles 20, 20, believe the prophets. It says, first, believe the Lord and you'll be established. Believe the prophets and you will prosper. No, we want to stone them. We want to get into adolescent talk. Well, here we go again. Are the prophets going to admit it? It's not about that. It's about we are at war. The stake of our nation, this generation is at war. We're at war with Leviathan, with Jezebel. We're at war with fear. We're at war with ourselves. And we've got to believe the prophets, Joshua and Caleb, those who are speaking and declaring this is the will and intent of God. Abraham, let God get away. He walked away. What if he would have just turned around because he understood covenant and said, God, will you remember your covenant for the sake of one righteous man? Look at me, God, I have a covenant with you. God would have changed his mind and absolutely, even though Sodom and Gomorrah was a mess and didn't deserve it, just like we don't, he would have answered his covenant man. How do you know? Exodus 32. The people had corrupted themselves. Moses was in the glory of God. And God said, get down. There, the people, there's a noise. There's a stench. And so Moses went down. And God said, Moses, move out of my way. I want to kill every one of them. Listen, that's not where we're at. We've repented. God is not about wanting to hand this nation to Biden and Kamala and to the Democratic left. They excluded him. Why would he include them? But Moses did something that very few of us are willing to do. No, we want to be keyboard warriors. We want to tell off the prophets. And I'm asking you this. Why are you attacking the prophets, the, the, the intercessors, the Christians, the positive voices, no matter who they are, even on the media? Why are you attacking them? You ought to be attacking the lying media. You ought to be attacking the liars that are wanting to strip our freedoms from this nation. We attack ourselves. Moses stood up in the face of God. He said, God, if you wipe them out, you need to start with me and include my name. And God looked and Moses said, God, what Abraham refused to do, it's what we need to do. He said, will you remember your covenant that you made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Will you remember God? God changed his mind. Yes, he changed his mind. He was just waiting for someone to stand up and say, God, will you, will you heal America? Will you appoint Donald Trump who stands for life, who stands for liberty, who stands for righteousness and justice, who stands for the right for a child to live, who blessed Israel, moved the Jerusalem to the capital, Lord, who has done more for urban America, and the list goes on and on and on and on. Will you remember the covenants, Lord, of those who've gone before us and currently live that said, God, Israel, you dedicated yourself to it, yet they didn't recognize you when you came and they rejected you. 
not the United States, Lord, this nation was dedicated by their choice to you. And they cut a covenant with you, God. And you shall remember and you shall spare this land. I want to share what happened to me last night. I woke up in the middle of the night and I began to go into my prayer room and I prayed. And uh, I went back to bed about 3 o'clock in the morning and I must have awakened my wife, Brenda, because she said, Hank, I need to get up and pray. I said, okay, that's fine. And uh, she got up to pray and I drifted off to sleep and I had the most disturbing dream that I want to share with you. And immediately after this dream, I woke up, my eyes opened, I was looking up at the ceiling and I was shaken. And my wife, I immediately heard her come into the room and I said, Brenda, what time is it? Note the time. She said, it's 4.45 a.m. Note the time, 4 45 a.m. At 4.45 a.m., I was awakened. In the dream, I saw Biden, and he was getting ready to announce, this is this morning, I saw in the dream Biden getting ready to announce that he had, getting ready to make his declared victory speech. speech. So he was being positioned to, to make his victory speech. The next thing that I saw in the dream on the television screen was the face of the enemy. I'm not saying that was Biden. I'm saying I saw Satan. You might laugh at that. You might write about that. You may mock that. Listen, I'm just sharing you the dream. You've already mocked. The point of this is for those who have ears to hear. I literally, now I've seen the devil uh, appear once, but he never spoke to me. Thank God. But in this dream, he did. And he spoke. And he said, he started speaking on the, on, the, uh, on the television screens. And the news began to change with his voice. And he was saying, Satan. And he was wanting the president to concede. This is all playing out right now. But here's the part that I want you to, to, to remember. Are we going to believe prophets Joshua and Caleb? In other words, the prophetic company whether it's intercessors, believers, Christians, friends, prophets, who are saying, no, we can take this nation. It's our time. It's our generation. No, we won't allow an evil report because of fear, false evidence appearing real, to steal our opportunity at this time that it skips over and we have to wait a whole other generation. God forbid. The devil was speaking. I could feel the fear gripping the souls of many in the nation as it seemed like all hope was lost. And the announcement sucked the wind out of many. Maybe that's where you're at. And they were announcing Satan's voice. It was the devil himself announcing that it was over. Then God said, shout, raise your voice. This is not over. It is a lie. And God was declaring that his will, his heart, his mind, his intent, his agenda is for his man, President Trump, to stand again in the land. The spirit is willing, but is our flesh going to be weak? Because we can't believe. Whose report are we going to believe? What have we been watching yeah, but Hank, it's over. Don't you understand? Listen to me. There is so much fraud. There is so much evil. Do you really think that God is going to let this nation be given over to the hands of those who have purposely pushed him out over fraud and evil? This is a day like no other that we need to mobilize in prayer where they're counting and recounting and gather and worship and pray. We need to summon the courts of heaven and say, no, God, you will put a restraining order. God spoke to me. Come on, some of you that remember my previous Facebook post, I just got off the plane on Wednesday. I spoke to you, and God said we're in a 70-day window. People are saying, well, you mean it's going to take 70 days? Listen, 
70 days that God has declared judgment. 70 is the number for judgment, but it's also the number of God's power. And I believe over the next 70 days, we need to be in a position that we are on our knees, we are fasting, we are praying, we are taking a 9-11 position that our nation is at war. It's under attack. And I will fight for its freedom and God's agenda. And I refuse for him to pass over this generation. So they began to announce, give up. People started immediately coming to mine and other social media pages and accusing, mocking, attacking because they believed this evil entity that was speaking. They believed the report that was the devil himself. It was so convincing, this announcement, that it filled, was so filled with evil, but people could not discern the spirit or the agenda behind the false report. It was so convincing that I even had to shake myself and rise up and shout, it's not true. I continued to declare this, but people were believing the news over my voice. Then something um, interesting happened to me. I saw this woman, and I don't know her. I don't even know much about her. I've not followed her. But she has pink hair, and her name is Kat Kerr. And I saw her in this dream. I don't know why she's in the dream. I see people in dreams all, all the time, and I know that they mean something. But for some reason, she was in the dream, and when this announcement was made, she was sitting at a table, and she was eating cake and began to do the very opposite of everyone that was in this restaurant. And she began to laugh hysterically and started to roll on the ground laughing. And so I called uh, Sunil, who works for us, who was part of uh, Kim Clement's ministry, and I said, do you know this Kat Kerr? And he said, yes. And, and of course, you know, she's uh, had, uh, you know, times where she's gone to heaven and come back with very precise, concise words from the Lord. In fact, uh, Sunil was telling me that she was one of the very first people that literally prophesied accurately before Trump was even being considered for president, that he would be president. Even with all the stuff that's happened in 2016, she accurately prophesied that he would be you know, uh, uh, the place of presidency and be placed in the White House. And she uh, has also had encounters with God where she's spoken to him face to face. Where he, So I think she represents a heavenly perspective that we need to get. In other words, she represents not the evil report, that is going to come out today, is going to continue on the land for a season. That happened with the 10 spies who never got their inheritance. She represents the prophetic company. She represents the warrior Christian. She represents the righteous rebellion. She represents the silent voice. She represents Christians who really felt like this nation is going forward because he was the choice. Jesus said, you know a good tree by the fruit that it bears. You may not like the party, you may not like the personality, but you cannot deny the fruit. You say he's racist. Listen to me. Are you going to continue to stand in the rhetoric and the lies that have been upon the land? Or are you going to look at the fruit of what's been done in four years that indicate prophetically what God wants to continue for us to feed on? A good tree cannot prove produce evil fruit according to Jesus. I believe cat in the dream represents heaven's perspective, heaven's per, uh, per position, heaven's instruction against the satanic agenda and announcement. It's not over. And I think that's the thing. She represents that prophetic company that we need to align ourselves with the prophetic company. You know, Moses, his whole time that he was the leader of Israel, he had to defend the word of the Lord. And it got him to a place of anger that he was never allowed to see the promise until Matthew 17 on the place of transfiguration. I want to share something that happened. Because a lot of times, people, they get caught up in, in too much of what the report is that is upon the land. That doesn't reflect the report of the Lord. In Daniel chapter 10, Daniel was fasting and praying, and that really needs to be our position. I haven't put a drop of food in my mouth. I'm fasting over this nation right now. I'm fasting over the process. And Moses 
or not most, Daniel was praying and fasting the first day. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 10 that it was the first day that Daniel prayed, watch this, that the Lord heard him. Not just that the Lord heard him, the court of heaven agreed with his fasting and his prayer and mobilized angelic forces to begin to move against a very strong satanic spirit, the prince of Persia. We are dealing with very strong satanic presence and spirits that want this nation. And they want you to agree and get in fear so that we can skip over what God wanted with Donald Trump and give it to a generation that didn't want it. Because all they saw was giants and how big the process may be in the courts of recount, exposing a fraud. So Daniel prayed, fasted the first day, God heard him. But there was, and this is where we have to grow and mature as Christians. I know I'm talking to you very sharply today because I feel God is trying to awaken us. And I talked about the sleep, the sleep of Jacob. There's also the sleep of, of, um, of Samson right now that's on a lot of people. They're so seduced like Samson was, out of their anointing, out of their faith, out of their victory, because they're listening to the lies of, of, of a seducing spirit that is upon the land. Another kind of sleep was the sleep of Eutychus. Eutychus, Acts 20, he was in the third story, story seat, which represents where the church is. But he fell asleep. That's where some Christians are. They're just going to hear the news. That's where some people are at. They're going to hear the news. He's going to declare himself as winner. They, they, they've already said President Trump wouldn't concede. This has all been set up to make it look like he's a dictator. And people are going to be like Eutychus. They're going to fall asleep. Uh, some are going to be like Samson, where they're just going to hand things over to a seducing spirit while they get their hair cut, their eyes point, poked out. Or like Jacob, who shakes himself and doesn't even realize that God's trying to visit and hand the nation over. In Daniel 10, getting back to that, Daniel prayed, he fasted, but there was a period of time, God said a 70-day window. It's crucial, it's critical. Are we going to agree with the company of Joshua's and Caleb's, or are we going to agree with the evil report? The 70 days determine it. I agree with the word of the Lord. His will be done. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Stop the nonsense of attacking each other, attacking the voices right now. You need to unite and say, no, God, they heard right. We've all heard right. Unless you're so ignorant that you couldn't see the plan of the enemy through Biden and Kamala Harris and the Democratic Party. Daniel 10, there was a time frame from the first moment he prayed and fasted and God heard and God responded to 21 days later to where the angel of the Lord eventually appeared and fought and won against the prince of Persia. That's where we're at. There's a gap between our prayers, our prophecies, our decrees to what will take place ultimately. And in this 21 days, we cannot get into fear and unbelief. I want to bring you back to something as I close this up here. Back in 9-11, I told you that God said that he would raise up a prophet out of, or, or a president out of New York City that would bring this nation back on course. And in, and in those days, I didn't know who it was. And our church knows because they walked through this from 9-11 all the way to where God began to be more specific. I remember when God had me prophesy the uh, recount in George W. Bush with Al Gore. And people attacked us when it looked like that they were announcing it for Gore. And I said that this thing would go to the Supreme Court with a five to four decision. That was before all of it happened. People thought I was crazy. I wasn't the only one. And it didn't look like Bush would pu pull it out. It didn't look like it would happen. We're here again. 
9-11, God began to say, I'll raise up a president. I'll give him two terms for each tower, that one for each tower that was attacked. There was two towers. Finally, God began to speak and say, I will raise up this mystery, this president from New York City in the 240th year of America's reign. That was about 12 years before that, that, that prophecy. That would have been 2016. Notice how since 2016, all that the enemy's been trying to do and Christians have, have been lulled to sleep, they've been deceived, they can't see what God's trying to do. They believe the lies of the media. Their attempt from day one of Donald Trump was to remove him. No, really what they're trying to do is remove God's choice, God's agenda, just like they're trying right now. And right now we are in a very critical place that has nothing to do with whether the prophets missed it or not. It's whether we are going to believe the report of the Lord through the prophets or the evil report of Satan himself that would skip over God's agenda a whole generation. God raised up this president just like he said. There's documented prophecies from our ministry that said in the 240th year of America's reign it happened. Now, back up. In a few, minute, a few years before that, I met a man that I had never, I didn't know who he was. I didn't know much about him. His name was Kim Clement. I can show you a picture to prove it. Him and I, we took a picture together with our wives. And he came in to this meeting together where it was set up because he was aware of how I prophesied. And I, I didn't have a national ministry at that time. I was just a guy from Omaha, Nebraska, and he had this, this, this ministry, and I didn't know much about him. I just knew he had long hair, wore boots, and he comes in, and he's dressed like in this kingly robe looking thing, like, a, like, a, like you would say like a prophet of old, and he's got his long hair, and he's got his boots, and he's got this beautiful like kingly robe is the only way I could describe it on him, and he walks in, and he's got this, and I, and I kind of teased him about it because it was about this big. It was like, you know, I, I said, what is that, a six foot, eight foot, you know, book that he hand calligraphied with the word of the Lord. And he said, in this book, Hank, is prophecies that I've never shared publicly with anyone. And he said, I know you've been prophesying that there's going to come a president out of New York. And this is before, I mean, this is, this is years. This is like right after 9-11. I don't even remember the year that it was. I could probably find out and, and uh, be more documentally uh, accurate in, in what, what year that was. But he looks at me and I'm holding, I'm wearing a suit. I look the complete opposite of Kim. He's long hair, he's got boots, he's got this robe. I've got, you know, I'm dressed up in a suit, a tie that I hate. And I've got a little dot matrix, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, with, what, what do you call it, with that little uh, plastic sheet over the top where I could present it, you know. But dot matrix prophecies. And so before we're going to meet with this person, we start comparing prophecies, and this man, Kim, backs up, and he says, Hank, why is it when I look at you, I see me? I said, I don't know, sir. He said, you remind me of myself, and God is showing, when I'm looking at you, I'm seeing me. And I'm not saying I'm that man. Do not hear that. I've never professed that. I just want to be me. People say, well, you prophesy a lot like him. Well, that's because Kim said, he said, you and I are carrying the same kind of spirit and anointing in the earth to prophesy the king's words and to be set as a prophet over America. He said, the difference is I have long hair. Look at me. He said, look at you. He said, but one day, Hank, you're going to stand in a place looking like you do, being who you are with the same spirit that I carry, that I will not be in that place. I didn't realize for a million years that that's where I'm at right now. And I, and, I, and I remember we compared notes, and he said, this is so crazy that these, are, these words are almost so identical. There is no way except God that this would be the words of the Lord. And it was about, I will raise up a president out of New York City, and I will give him two terms. So in comes this man that we're going to minister to, and it was Rudy Giuliani. He sits down, and we begin to minister the word of the Lord to Rudy Giuliani. And Kim and I both began to declare that Rudy Giuliani would be a gatekeeper that God would appoint in the right time to watch over this nation, to protect it for what God wants to do, for what was a wounding in New York City with the towers, God would raise up a president that would be a healing and a reform. Kim and I began to minister to Rudy Giuliani. And I said to Rudy, I said, some very, you know, private things I won't go into it. 
Kim shared some private things. And I said to, to Mayor Giuliani, I said, Sir, God is going to give you a sign. You've been appointed as a gatekeeper to this nation. And there will be a time where you will see that the underdog shall arise. And you will be placed there to make sure that the underdog arises as the gatekeeper. Could it be what Kim said? You will stand in a place that I won't. And now the gatekeeper, Mayor Giuliani, is fighting for the United States of America with all the fraud and things that are happening right now. Could it be? Years prior, God spoke and saw this day. And I said to Mayor Rudy Giuliani, in fact, when I said it to him, he kind of backed up a little bit. He was very surprised. I said, Rudy, Mayor Giuliani, excuse me, Mayor Giuliani, God says that New York Giants, the place that you're from, will win the Super Bowl. And it's to show that the underdog can take out the Giants. He backed up and he looked at me and he says, well, you know they have the worst record, and I believe he said in the history of the NFL, that it would be no way humanly possible or statistically possible that they could even make it to the Super Bowl. But I said to him, I said, I understand, sir, but God is saying this will be a sign that the underdog will prevail and a miracle will take place. Do you know that was the year, worst record, New York Giants, Mayor Giuliani pulled out of the race for president. New York Giants goes on to the Super Bowl, and they won it by a miracle catch on top of a man's helmet. Could it be that we're going to see, once again, it doesn't look possible? That this nation, it looks like the moment that David, spouting off, uh, David, excuse me, Goliath spouting out his, off his mouth for 40 days and 40 nights with great intimidation. He was a giant. It looked hopeless. It paralyzed the whole nation. Nobody wanted to do anything. Here this powerful army of Israel with the backing of God did nothing. We cannot be at that place because they announce that Biden is president and that Pelosi is saying we, he needs to concede. That's what Goliath did. And it paralyzed the whole nation. Nobody did anything until, Goli until David. A young man rose up, an underdog, and took the giant out and brought a great victory to their nation. I believe Mayor Giuliani right now is standing as a David appointed of God, you are that David with your prayers, your agreement, your mobilization that can knock out this giant. And if God could do it for something as silly as football, I love football, but it's silly if you think about it. Why would he use that as a sign? Because that's where we're at today. Matthew 23, 37 says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, that stoneth the prophets, and kills those that I've sent unto you. So they were prophets sent by God. Watch this. God always prophesies his heart, his mind, his will, and his agenda through his servants, the prophets. They've been prophesying. The intercessors have been praying and prophesying. The Christians have been praying and fasting. Those that are of the remnant, crying out to God, prophesying. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, that stoneth the prophets and kills those that I've sent unto you how I would have gathered you, how I would have appointed President Trump, how I would have overruled abortion. I'm only using that as examples. I'm not saying that's going to happen, that it isn't going to be, or that I'm giving a conceding speech, so please don't write and accuse me of that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying God sends the vessels. God sends the prophetic agenda. We have a choice, and that's where we're at right now. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, that stoneth the prophets and kill those that have been sent unto you. How I would have, come on, that's conditional. How I would have gathered you, protected you, preserved you, like a mother who, who a hen who gathers her chickens. But watch this, you would not. If there's going to be any indictment, 
If we are to leave everything out on the battlefield, because come on, we've all been fighting. If there's going to be any indictment that God could bring to, to this vessel, it's not that I spoke inaccurately. I would admit it if I did. It's not that. It's that, God, I fought for you and I'm fighting for you. And the responsibility came down to Matthew 23, 37. I would have gathered you, but you would not. In other words, what are you going to do? Are you going to believe the report of the Lord? Are you going to believe the Joshua's and the Caleb prophetic companies? Or are you going to agree with an announcement that's going to come out in the land that you're going to add your agreement in? Not me. I'm going to fight. Where are we at right now as I bring this to a close? I believe that when God spoke something to me, it was last year, and he said that there would be plagues that this decade would start off with. And he said that this decade would be harsh, the beginning of it, which is what we have saw. And he said it would be like in the days of, of uh, Israel and Egypt where God had to make a distinction or he had to make a difference. This is what I'm trying to say to you. If you're a Christian and you love God, God is trying to show us that he's wanting to bring a Goshen moment to us, a moment of, of, of favor, a moment of celebrating, a moment of release, a moment of, of victory, bringing us into our promised future of what we've been praying for. And so God prophesied and he said it would be like in the days of Egypt and Israel. Well, think about what happened because, you know, Jesus at one point had to tell his listeners, you know, as in the days of Noah, what was that? That was a prophetic indicator of something that they could identify with the present moment of events. So God said through this vessel, he said, listen, it'll be as in the days of Israel and Egypt. That's how this decade will be. Well, look at what happened. Israel had to go through plagues. You say, well, no, they didn't. It was light in Goshen. You only read that when you get to the point where the finger of God shows up. And I think it was around the fourth plague, and then all of a sudden there was a distinction. Then you keep reading in Exodus 14 where you see the plagues prior, and Exodus 14, now you see a nation shut in. In fact, Pharaoh says it. He's pursuing them with his army, Exodus 14. And he says, listen, they're shut in. We've been shut in. He then pursues them. Now watch this. Israel is on the shore. They're to the right, if you look at the map. Pharaoh is pursuing from the left. We are being pursued by some very powerful evil forces from the left. Whether you want to mock that, write about it, whatever, it's true. And Israel did not have anywhere to go. They could not go north. They could not go south. They even couldn't go east because there was a Red Sea in front of them. But there was a pursuing enemy from the left, from the west. And they didn't know what to do. But Pharaoh shut off his mouth, just like you're going to hear an announcement. It's the dream, 4.45 a.m. Why 4.45 a.m.? Why did I open my eyes at that moment and say, Brenda, what time is it? Note the time. She said, it's 4.45. I said, I immediately got to document this dream. She said, she had just come from prayer, so she was under the anointing. She said, Hank, I believe God is saying 445 for four more years, 445. He's the 45th president. Four more years for number 45, President Trump. Israel is out on the shore. Pharaoh proclaims that he's the victor. He says, I got him, just like they're going to do now. 270, we got it. They're going to announce victory, just like the 10 spies of Numbers 13 and 14 who come back with an evil report to get the nation, to get the people to agree so that it passes over a generation. What happened? The people got into fear. Stay out of fear. Stay out of unbelief. Moses, to the point where he began to shriek, Exodus 14, and God said, why are you crying out unto me? Why are you shrieking? 
Lift up your rod. Every one of us needs to lift up our rod right now. That's our place of prayer. It's the place of mobilization. It's getting out there and worshiping at the public places, not protesting, not being rude, not being obnoxious, but taking your rightful authority and place in your city, your place of polling. Come on, the city you live in, the nation you live in, you ought to say this is an outrage that a hundred for one candidate and you think that we're stupid and that we should concede and give up our nation because the news says the media is going to report. Biden's going to say it. No, we fight until the truth is revealed. Let the courts mobilize and let God arise and every man be found out to be a liar. Children of Israel, Moses lifted up his rod. What happened immediately? Something supernatural began to take place. I know you want to be in fear right now. But we discount something that grieves God. It's his divine intervention. God can shift this thing, turn this thing that quickly. And that's what he did with Israel. He came at that moment and he made Israel, Pharaoh, his army face something red called the Red Sea. And I believe that the red victory that Trump had before they chose on the left to stall it, they're going to have to face the red. They're going to have to face that there was a victory. They're going to have to face the fact that he was winning until fraud. And it's interesting, as soon as uh, Biden got on and made his, what I call his clarion call to wake up all of whatever the strategy was. Okay, move into position now. Let's start, you know, uh, 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 counting them and adding them because he's winning. But he hasn't won. God opened the Red Sea and there was breakthrough that came to a nation. But what did God do? He drowned the efforts of a pursuing enemy from the left who wanted to change the destiny and the outcome of a people and bring them back into slavery and socialism and bondage. Interesting enough, their bodies and their weapons washed ashore. I believe their stuff, if we will pray in the 70 days day window of things that were meant to be weapons formed against this presidency, against our future, are going to be washed up and have no power to be formed against us. Brother Copeland sent me something that I want to end with this. He gave me something from Michelle Bachman that I want to encourage you that she forwarded she said share it with everyone what's going on in the battleground states of Pennsylvania Michigan Wisconsin Georgia North Carolina Arizona Nevada she says is nothing short of wicked just last night Arizona was moved from the blue column to the white toss-up column our prayers are availing much it's now up to the body of Christ to step up what if we mobilize a mighty intercessory prayer army to storm the gates of heaven on if God has chosen to pronounce judgment on our nation and let it fall under the weight of its own wicked devices, then so be it. I can rest in knowing that I left it all on the battlefield. The prayer strategy is simple. Join us in prayer through the prayer petitions uh, that you can go out and, and, and contact uh, uh, Michelle Bachman and forward this to at least 10 people and raise up a prayer army. Now she said there's prayer points, five strategic prayer points. One is to expose and hold accountable those who practice the seven things that God hates and he says are detestable to him, and that's in Proverbs 6, and you know what those are. And he, she said, prayer point number two, we need to pray and expose all wickedness intended to steal, kill, and destroy. The so number one, we need to pray and expose and hold accountable those practices of the seven things that God hates according to Proverbs 6. Prayer point number two, we need to pray and expose all wickedness intended to steal of, of our nation and, the, and especially in these battleground states. Number three, we need to pray and frustrate those who seek to steal, kill, and destroy. Uh, 
Prayer point number four, we need to pray and frustrate and thwart the plans of those who attempt to sabotage this and subvert the express will of the people. Now, she puts under every one of these prayer points the exact prayer that you can pray. For the sake of time, I don't have time to, to read them all, but you can go out and, uh, and find that. Prayer point number five, we need to pray Psalm 5 for protection and favor for Pre President Trump and, and uh, for the rest of the, the, the team, including the gatekeeper right now, Rudy Giuliani. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth over the United States, over this fraud. As it is in heaven, we pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Father, I pray that the people in the sound of my voice and those who have not even heard my voice, that you would speak that they will not agree with the report of the ten spies who came back and absolutely changed the outcome and the destiny of a people and a nation through an evil report. I pray that God, the Joshua's and the Caleb's who have been speaking prophetically, whatever that company is, that, Lord, their words will stand in the land and the people will mobilize and say, yes, we will prevail. The giants are bred for us. Father, lift the veil of fraud, delay, deception off of this nation. We summon the God of heaven and the courts of heaven who has ruled in favor of this president. And we remind you, God, that he has chosen life. He's chosen liberty. He's chosen righteousness and justice. They have chosen to pray, to call upon your name, and to declare the name Jesus Christ. This we've not seen from the other side. Oh, God of mercy. He has blessed Israel. and You have promised that you will bless those who bless Israel. So we summon you, God, as you did in the days where the people cried out in the days of Jehoshaphat where they looked outnumbered and they said, God, the Lord is good and his mercy prevails forever. Lord, I pray, oh good God, arise with your goodness. Give people good news. Let something shift now and in the coming days. Father, let mercy prevail over the land. And God, I also pray that you would remember your covenant that we have with you the almighty God for this nation. And may that spirit arise like it did in 9-11. We won't fight each other, but you will unite and say, God bless America. I pray your mercy, your grace, your wisdom, your guidance upon every person, Lord, that is standing right now on the land, the attorneys, that are positioned as gatekeepers to expose the fraud. God, let betrayal take place in the enemy's camp. Let the sound of those who are part of fraud begin to be so convicted that they'll come out and speak it. Shift this thing, God. Only you can make sense and make order of the nonsense that has taken place. I pray peace. I pray restraint over the hand of the enemy who would desire to bring people to a place of bloodshed and harm and hurt and to attack the innocent and to attack one another. I pray your mercy and your grace and your restraining hand. Let every word that you have spoken, God, out of your mouth and through your servants, may they stand in the land, I pray. You are good and your mercy endures forever and will prevail. We thank you, O God of heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for letting me come to you today. Stay strong. Pray. Mobilize. I'm waiting, anticipating a move of God. I love you. I'll talk with you soon.